Good afternoon. My name is Charles Reed, and I'm the voice teacher here at Andrews University. And we are in the Howard Performing Arts Center on the campus of Andrews University. And um, I have been asked to talk a little bit and demonstrate a little bit about the acoustics of this facility. So before I do, I want to tell you a little bit about how this facility is constructed. It was built in, or it opened in 2003, and it was designed by the um, architecture firm of Kierkegaard Associates in Chicago. And it was paid for, and it was a donation of, uh, of John and Dee Dee Howard. So that's why it's called the Howard Performing Arts Center. Um, John Howard was a local band teacher in St. Joe, Michigan. And he and his wife, instead of taking extravagant vacations uh, um, and hiring lawn services and things like that, I heard he, he always took care of his yard and himself, and they, they just kept a simple life. But they had a passion for music, and they saved money, including some money he inherited, and it grew and grew and grew. And he's been a huge blessing to this whole community, um, including Andrews and this Howard Performing Arts Center. So it, I've sung all around the world. I've sung in some of the best concert halls, and uh, theaters, and this is a real gem. I came here five years ago and was so thankful to find that we had a beautiful performing arts facility with wonderful acoustics, and acoustics that could be adapted to the need of the performance. So um, what are acoustics, you might ask? So acoustics are, in most simple terms, described by how live or wet or bright the sound might be. And so, for example, if you've ever been to a cathedral in Europe, you've heard super live, super wet, you know, whoa, 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 kind of acoustics. And this facility actually can almost get to that kind of wetness. We're going to demonstrate that. And, and then if you've ever been to a TV studio soundstage, you've heard super dry acoustics. Or in many different places, you've heard something in the middle. And so this current setup is for the driest setting. If you, if you could zoom in on the curtains, you're going to notice that the curtains come all the way across. There's just a little bit left at the, at the back there. And then the back of the, of the hall is completely closed. And then this other side is closed. And there are actually two ranks of curtains on the sides. There's a, an upper rank and a lower rank, which you can't totally tell, but they're, they're there. And so this is fully closed, which makes it as dry a space as it is. So now I'm going to sing a little something, and you'll get to hear what it sounds like as best we can through this, this mic. Um, I'm going to step away, because I think it, too close will just get, it'll, it'll limit it. So we're going to try to listen for the acoustic of the room. In fact, why don't you focus on the room with the camera, because it might pick up, it might just pick up the sound better. So it's a little bit of Cavaradossi's first aria from Tosca. So what we're going to do, oh, if, before, we, before we adjust the, the acoustics, let me tell you one more thing. Um, there are special things about this theater. So the walls are over, of the theater itself are over three feet thick of concrete, three feet. And the ceiling has over 1.3 tons of concrete. So there's, there's a, a massive amount of insulation built into this. And then we have these wooden sound baffles that are placed in various places. And uh, th th these are not accidental. They're, they're more than decoration. They help to send the sound around in a proper way. And then we have these special air vents. If you look down under the seats, I don't know the exact number, but there are hundreds of these little grates under the seats. And these carry air conditioning and heating into the theater without actually adding noise. So it takes very long. If, if for, for some reason the, the heat were to be turned off in the wintertime, 
and uh, they were to come in and, and turn it on, they would have to get the heat going for a couple of days to bring this room up to a temperature that would be comfortable for the audience. So it takes a very long time because this air is constantly moving, but it's, it's moving at a very slow and silent pace. Now, follow me into this side room. We're going backstage. And I'll show you, this is the, uh, the magic acoustic uh, sound panel, or the, the changing of the curtains. And I'm going to just turn these, so right now you can see they're fully closed, so it's very dry. And I'm going to do the exact opposite. We're going to go to full live room or wet acoustic. So we're going to go from dry to wet. Now if you'll go outside there and watch the curtains come in, I want to press the green button and they'll start to open. And you can just tell me when they stop. Um, the, the acoustic we began with would be the acoustic preferred by our wind symphony or our, our university band ensemble. And that was that drier acoustic. I don't know how it sounds on this recording, but it's definitely much more boomy and there's a lot more, um, there's a lot more delay in the sound now that we've opened these curtains. Uh, this is officially the setting that would be used, for example, by a boys' choir. And last year we were, we were fortunate to have the Vienna Boys' Choir come and perform on our campus. Actually, they were fortunate. It's a true story. They contacted us. They had performed here several years before, and they like performing in this space so much that they, cl they contacted us and asked if, if they could come here and if they could be worked into our season. So all the way from Vienna, Austria, the, the Vienna Boys Choir wanted to perform in this space. So let's sing again and to see what happens with the sound. I'm going to step away because that has a limiter and we'll see what the sound is. <laughs> Hopefully you can hear there's a, a much greater delay in the, in the sound, and, and that's the, the full extreme of our acoustic. But whether we're using a super live acoustic or a dry acoustic, the HPAC has a balanced sound at all of these different settings, for the, from the one extreme to the other extreme and everything in between. It's an incredibly balanced sound. Now, up there on the back wall, behind this, uh, this screen that's been put down at the moment, there's another curtain. And that curtain actually is fixed. And it's eventually, the, the hope is that eventually it will disappear because there's a hole behind there that could house a concert organ that would be able to play with the symphony orchestra and things of that nature. OK, we wanted to look at the rehearsal room. And I want to show you a couple of acoustic things there. So when they, when they uh, designed the acoustics for this building, they were very much keeping in mind the real needs of the ensembles that would play here. And it was principally designed as a concert hall, not a theater. Even if we don't have an orchestra pit, we don't have a place to fly uh, sets in and, and out. And so instead, um, we were working with a concert hall 
and just trying to make it all fit, which we managed to do. But um, this is the room that we have our, our wind symphony and our symphony orchestra rehearsing in. Uh, I don't know if this is the setup for the orchestra. I think this is actually the setup for a band rehearsal. And you might notice that coming from the stage to here, the, the amount of liveness and the sound dropped off considerably. I hope, I hope you can tell that. And so it's, it's intentionally a little bit more dry. Um, they have a lot of instruments playing in here, and it gets really loud. And by keeping the sound drier, it, it helps them to, first of all, not go deaf, but also to be able to hear the clarity of their own individual instrument, plus the blend of the group playing together. And that's all intentional. They have tall ceilings to give some headroom. They also have curtains. You'll see these blue curtains. And these blue curtains can be adjusted uh, not by automatic pulley, but by hand pulleys to uh, make the room a little bit brighter or, or a little more live. And, um, and you notice these air, air uh, ducts here with the silver baffling or, or silver insulation. Um, that's acoustic insulation so that when, when they're in here rehearsing, they don't have the constant roar or the dull hum of an HVAC system that's pouring sound from the air conditioning and the heating system. Um, in addition, you would notice, if you look carefully, I guess it's more on this back wall, you'll see that there are, hmm, let's just walk closer, I don't think they can see it. If you look at the side wall, you'll see these just look like normal cinder blocks. But up here, we have both rough cinder blocks and smooth cinder blocks. And this is also part of the acoustic engineering of the room. It deflects the sound in different ways. Uh, as, and then these, these blue panels are sound baffles that absorb sound. Another interesting thing is in the Howard Performing Arts Center, we house WAUS, which is our campus radio station. And it broadcasts all around Michigan and into Indiana. And I've actually met a uh, professional. I, I was once doing a concert. And we have a ghost that just knocked <laughs> over some chairs. That's a joke. Okay, <laughs> so <laughs> that's amazing. Um, no, I, I was once performing a, a concert down in, in uh, Louisville, Kentucky, and met a, a harpsichordist who used to live in Ann Arbor, Michigan, on the other side of the state. And when I said I was from Andrews University, he said, you've got that radio station. And he knew us because he listens to the radio station. Well, if you follow these big black coated vents. And you just go over there to that wall, you're looking at the, the wall that separates this rehearsal room from the radio station. And it's really important because they're live on the air with people talking on a microphone. Uh, it's really important that the sound from rehearsals here doesn't end up on the air as they talk on their microphones at the radio station. And so these these uh, really thick insulation uh, pieces that you see are actually covering air vents. And so you see the, the basic insulation and then you see the super insulation. And that's covering the air vents so that all the sound produced in this room stays in this room, which is important. It also is important because it stays in this room during a performance. Uh, it's possible that an ensemble can be performing a uh, a concert at Andrews in, on, in the Howard main stage and then another ensemble could be rehearsing here and you won't hear it. There won't be any bleed through between the two rooms. So that's pretty much how the acoustics work here. Uh, wh what next? Are, are people asking questions or are we just... I haven't seen any come through. If anybody has any questions, feel free to ask them now. Okay. Um, if we don't have uh, questions now, we can always see if there's questions later and if we can answer them as they come. So. Okay, sounds good. So it's been a pleasure uh, showing you a little bit of the inner workings and behind the, scenes, uh, uh, behind the scenes view of what happens at the Howard Performing Arts Center here at Andrews University.